Spirit filled the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you. We have power of agreement here, Matthew 18, 19, in the name of Jesus. And we do agree. We have agreed, Father God, for a service here today. And we have agreed, Lord God, for the word to go forth and not return forward in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. We thank you for all that, Heavenly Father. We thank you we are the sons of God. We are covenant men and women. And we thank you for the covenant you have given us, Lord God. And Lord God, it will not alter it or change it, Father God. It is forever. So, Father, we are covenant men and women. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for it. Hallelujah. Father, we just call things not as though they are. We call this community, Elwood City, saved in the name of Jesus. We call them forth from every house in Elwood City, Father God. We call them to this church. to earth may your will be done on earth as it is in heaven this is what living looks like this is what freedom feels like this is what heaven sounds like we praise yeah yeah this is what living looks like this is what freedom feels like this is what heaven sounds like we praise you
God. And ladies and they're good to have ladies. Man should not live by himself. I tell you, amen to that. Uh, June 1st is watercolor and painting class beginning on, on the 1st. It's a great opportunity to come out and pray. And, and I believe Elizabeth is doing that. And we're glad to see Ray Warmel. His birthday is coming on Wednesday the 15th. And then Paul McIntyre is back here in the sound of his is the 60th. So you want to wish you look as he look healthy, wealthy, and wise. Amen. He's good. Amen. It's good. We're glad we're here at church. And also, Grace wanted to find you guys stay here to have the praise and worship. Kids are already six while we're over there. We have a nursery three years or younger. Let's see, you got a kid. Come on over. We'll minister to them back here so you can be ministered here. And that is really important to do that. I think I'm good. After church class, we're good. And uh, I think I'm done. Pastor Matt's done praying. Are we glad they're back? Yes. Yeah. Good morning, everybody. So stand together if you can. I think, is it March? You're doing the watercoloring class? Are you doing the watercolor class? Yes. Okay. Well, I think they're, yeah, they're doing it together. So anyways, if you like the paint, that's a great class to learn how. Let's pray. So God, we thank you for this morning. We just commit this time to you, Lord. We have, we have gotten ready. We've driven here, Lord. And that is to honor you, to put you first, and to be transformed more and more in our thinking, in our, the way we operate, to not be stuck in our ways, Lord, but to be moved from glory to glory, Father. Thank you, Lord. We're moving up higher with you. So bless this time together. Holy Spirit, we welcome you. God, we say, be here with us. In Jesus' name, everybody said.
Amen. Let's give the Lord some praise this morning. You're the everlasting God. Yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Renew our strength, Lord, like the eagles this morning. We want to celebrate motherhood today. And we want to honor you, moms. You've done so much. You know, without you, we wouldn't be here. When you think about it, isn't that true? So we thank you for your sacrifice to bring children into the world and then to nurture them and to raise them. And as a result, we're going to have, to have a country that's got a Christian background, Christian families, raising Christian offspring. Aren't you glad for it today? Come on, let's shout to Jesus today. Let's give him praise.
to you, Lord. And say with me, I trust you, Lord. Yes, so we trust you. Jesus, 
We say we want to develop that personal, intimate relationship with you, Father. Every single day we want to talk to you, get downloads from heaven on a continuous basis, Father. We receive your love today, your mercy, your grace. Right now, I want you to release. God just quickened to me. I want you to release fear, worry, and dread. Those three things. Release them right now. Just release fear, worry, and dread. Just let it go right now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Glory to God. Thank you, Father, that we're free. Who the Son has set free is free indeed. Jesus is free us. Thank you, Lord. Liberated us. Thank you, Father. Once again, release fear, worry, and dread. Let it go right now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Glory to God. God's bringing people back to America. God back to uh, the godly country, isn't he? And we need to pray and believe God for what? For people to, for Americans to come back to God, back to righteousness, and back to patriotism. Those three things. Father, bring America back to the fear of the Lord, back to God, back to you, Lord, and back to righteousness, back to patriotism, my God. Thank you for it, Father, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. You know, there was a group after the Revolutionary War. They were called uh, the Republican... Let me see, I forgot now what it is. Republican Motherhood. Republican Motherhood, and they were to teach patriotism to their children. And I think there could be a resurrection of that, don't you? We need that in this nation. Once again, teaching patriotism to our children, to honor the flag, to honor God in whom we trust, and to be thankful for this great country. Glory to God. Give someone a fist bump and tell them Jesus loves you today.
I was going to honor the person with the uh, youngest at person at home, like a baby. So I was going to give this to Doug. He, oh, Jamie's here. Is she, is she here too? Jamie's she's not here today. Okay. Well, let's honor Jamie then. Jamie, this is for you. It's like a little backpack. So let's honor Jamie. Hi, Ava. So be sure to get your notepads. They're like a little writing post-it notes. They have scriptures on them, and you can put them on your refrigerator. And uh, we just want to appreciate you, and we love we love our moms. Amen. If you have your, if you see your mom today, Tar, you love her, okay? I tell you, my wife did a great job as a mom with all of our children. I tell you, it's just a wonderful job, and we, I appreciate her so much. She brought balance to the home, <laughs> and a lot of grace, love, and mercy from her. Amen. It was her mercy and grace who really brought me to the Lord. I saw love, divine love in her, and I said, hey, I want what she's got. And that caused me to yield. But well, praise the Lord. I mean, believe America shall be saved. Amen. Amen. I believe it. And uh, let's see. The Jews, we asked for a donation last Sunday, if you recall, and we were able to send the Jewish nation in, in care of the International Fellowship of Christians and Jews. A check for twelve hundred dollars. So thank you for your generosity. Let's give Jesus a hand. Go to go. Now don't forget, we do have a class out there, uh, a, a follow-up uh, after church class. But we're also going to have a place out there where you can get your picture taken. It's got a big banner there. So um, Fred, I think you're teaching today, so they'll they'll just work around that while he's teaching. And so uh, be sure to take advantage of that. Get your picture taken. All right. Glory to God. Well, let's go ahead and give this morning. Anybody have an uh, envelope for their giving? Yes, he is good, isn't he? The Bible says he is an ever-present help in time of need. Glory to God. And when you cast your bread upon the water, it's going to come back on every wave. How many have found that to be true? But God is a giver, and we can imitate God by being givers in so many ways. Giving to people, giving to missions. And we thank you that uh, for that check for the Jews on last Sunday. All right, we all set to pray here today. All right, I don't see. All right, James, come on, brother, you can pray for us. Hallelujah. Father, we're just thanking these tithes offerings. We ask you to use it for your glory and spread the goodness of the gospel. Plus, the gift to give her life in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You know what? There are some other ushers. We forgot to pass these out. Uh, community men's breakfast. Uh, these flyers. So, Bob, are you going to take care of that in March? I guess this will be just for the men, right? Yep. Community men's breakfast. All right. Let's praise him.
and, and no one cared what she's gone through. And, and Greg with his broken arm. And, and Bob with his difficulties. And Tracy. And all those people have things that are bigger than we can handle. And we're just a bunch of ragtime, ragtime people, but we know who's our Savior is. And we're just running child repentance. God, that uh, as he goes through this hospital test today, Father, that it will come out good. Yeah. Or Father, that you will miraculously heal him. Yeah. Cause your anointing to touch his entire cardiovascular system. And we break the power of the enemy over his life. Thank you that the blood of Jesus is over him. Thank you for doing it, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. Say breakthrough is coming. America shall be saved. Glory to God. Shout to Jesus today. Glory. Have a seat there. Thank God he is an ever-present help in time of need. That means he's there all the time for you. Well, you can turn your Bibles to John chapter 19. John chapter 19. Good to see all of you today. John chapter 19. Don't you love his word? Oh, I certainly do. John chapter 19, verse 17. 19, 26. Excuse me, 26. And Jesus therefore saw his mother and the disciples standing by whom he loved. Referring to John. Actually, John wrote this, didn't he? He said unto, him, unto his mother, Woman, behold thy son. Then it said, he to the disciples, Behold my mother. And from that hour, that disciple took her unto his own home. Father, thank you for your word today. Thank you for the illumination of it on this wonderful Mother's Day, Father. We ask you to bless us right now with life and liberty. For your words are life to those who find them and health or medicine to all their flesh. Thank you for doing it, Lord. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. So Jesus wanted to make sure his mother was taken care of. And he says to John, Behold thy mother, and mother, behold thy son. And then from that point on, John took her into his home. But we know it wasn't for long because Jesus was raised from the dead. And I just would love to have been there to see the reunion with Jesus and Mary after the resurrection for her to see that her son was truly alive, risen from the dead, and will live forevermore and hold the keys of hell and death. And we know that uh, it wasn't for long, though, because he was only on the earth for 40 days before he ascended into heaven. So certainly John would have continued to take care of her. But the point is, Jesus loved his mother and cherished his mother. And so I think that's a, a good thing to do is to love our mothers. Amen. Amen. If your mother's here today, just go ahead and tell her, Mama, I love you. Or how about Ephesians 6, 1 to 3, where it says, Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. And honor thy father and thy mother, for that thy, what? That thy days may be long in the earth, and that the things may be well with you. And so we're to not only love them, but we're to what? Honor them. Everybody say honor. honor. So if your mother is here, just say, Mother, I honor you. <laughs> and over there in uh, Proverbs chapter 31, I believe it's verse 8, somewhere around there, where it says that the children will rise up and call her blessed. It didn't say they'd rise up and curse her out. No, rise up and call her blessed. And so that's what happens when you raise your children in the admonition of the Lord and to love their parents and to honor parents. And it's, there's a real wonderful benefit. This commandment has a benefit, doesn't it? Yeah. That it may be well with you. That means you're going to be well, spirit, soul, and body. And that you're going to live long. Yeah. And so we told our children, you want to live long, boy? Honor your mother. <laughs> or you'll get a Reynolds wrap, you know. <laughs> no, just kidding. Anyhow. <clears throat> so 
He is the one that, uh, that helps mothers and comforts and he embraces you to give you what you need to fulfill your destiny. And uh, supernatural help is on the way, moms, and you can rise above the challenges of life and he will equip you. Everybody say, I am equipped. I am equipped. He has equipped you, hasn't he? Christian motherhood is very unique and it's, there's no other motherhood like a Christian mom. He's given you power to put a hedge of protection around your children. Yes. He's given you <clears throat> insights to imminent dangers. I think of so many times that my mother would caution me on something and it prevented an accident or prevented me from getting killed, perhaps. <clears throat> and, you know, my mom had Holy Ghost radar. Yes. She did. And I'd come into the house and she'd say, boy, what have we been doing? How'd she know that? You're looking, hey, guilty look, smurglier. Come on, we're, what's up? What have you been up to? <laughs> Who you been with? Yeah, that's right. And she, even in her old age, she had Holy Ghost radar. We would show up at her house and she says, you know what? I just knew you guys were coming. I, she, she said, I made some chili, or I made some egg salad sandwiches, or, or, or I made some biscuits or, with cream chicken, and just like she knew we were coming, you know? And so, I may have found that to be true. Mothers have Holy Ghost radar, and they can help you in, in times of imminent danger, and put a wall, pray a wall of fire around you, according to Zechariah 2.5. There's a fellow by the name of Danny Thomas that I met at camp meeting down in West Virginia, <clears throat> and he has his own ministry, but he wouldn't be here today had he not been, I'm, so, I'm sorry to say that, well, no, I'm glad to say that it was basically because his, mother's, his mother prayed for him. He was a lifeguard at a, uh, at a lake, and he was actually on, out in the lake and on a raft uh, doing his lifeguard job, and everybody... When, when it was time for everybody to leave, they get out of the water, and he was the last one, and he swam to shore then from that uh, float, and he got cramps in his legs and in his abdomen and very bad cramps, and he began to drown. <clears throat> well, his buddies, including Ted Shuttlesworth was one of them, had gone, had already left the lake, but he said, hey, where's Danny? This, this isn't Danny Thomas, the comedian now. This is another Danny Thomas. <laughs> but he says, we better go back and check on him. And they did. And there he was struggling. And they jumped in the water and, and rescued him and saved his life. So he credits his life being saved by Ted Shuttlesworth. And now he has his own ministry to uh, raise up uh, money for these filters to give people water, drinking water in third world countries. You've heard, seen those filters on TV. Anyhow. But my point is that praying moms can make a difference, and it can rescue their children. The Bible says, if sexual fervent prayer of a righteous man or woman avails much. So moms, you have a unique privilege of praying for your children, standing in the gap, releasing prayer power to dispatch angels of God. Matthew 21, 22 says that when we pray, we're to ask in prayer, believing, and we shall receive. That's the catalyst. That's the thing that we need is believing. And not only in prayer, but we can decree things over our children. The Bible says in Job twenty two twenty eight, decree a thing and it shall be established. Amen. You can decree things, not what is, but rather what you want, right? You can say, as we did with our children, great is the peace of our children, for they are taught of the Lord. And they love righteousness and they hate iniquity. Amen. And so there's all sorts of things that you can say over your children, declare it, because why? Jeremiah 1.12 says, he will watch over his word to perform it. Amen. Amen. And so you can say, Father, thank you. The angels are surrounding them wherever they go, protecting them from bad associations. <laughs> thank you, Father. God's hand is a protection, encompasses them, keeping them from all harm. According to Isaiah 54.17, that no weapon formed against them shall prosper for my righteousness is of the Lord. And Psalm 4, verse 8, that says, He alone causes me to dwell in safety. 
And so you can dispatch angels to take care of your kids. Father, thank you. I thank you for the blood of Jesus over their lives, washing and cleansing them from the contamination of the world and keeping them from the demonic forces of darkness. Hallelujah. Amen. And you can plead the blood of Jesus. Yes. And there's scriptural basis for that in Isaiah 43, verses 25 and 26. It's like Mark Hankins' mother. He said he, she was always pleading the blood of Jesus over us kids. She says, one time when I was a... I was dating a girl in high school that, he says, I was in rebellion, and I wasn't living for God, and he says, I brought this girl home, and he said, these are his words now, he said, she was a real doozy, he said, she, she was not living for God either, and she, so I walk in, and there she is in her, in her mini skirt, and as soon as I get in the house, my mother said, I plead the blood of Jesus, <laughs> <laughs> and the girlfriend said, what'd she say? He says, oh, nothing, never mind, you yeah. <laughs> know. But it really worked because later on he went off to Bible college and met Trina, his wife, another Christian girl, and he found the one he was supposed to be with, see? Amen. And so plead the blood of Jesus over your children, amen? amen. Decree, declare, acknowledge, amen. just like Norval Hayes did with his daughter. She was on drugs. Her name was Zona, and she was really in bad shape. And so he just prayed, God, give her a visitation, a visitation of Jesus or a visitation of an angel. And oh, Father, put your hedge of protection around her. And so <clears throat> one night, uh, Zona was in her bedroom, and a big old angel appeared in her bedroom and scared the vinegar out of her, I'll tell you that. And so she turned her life around. She got delivered, set free. She got discipled and living for God completely. Because of what? Because of the prayers of her father. Amen. Decreeing things. So prayer is powerful. Decreeing things is powerful over your children. <clears throat> so don't forget to do that every day. Say, Father, thank you that they'll make right choices not to succumb to evil temptations. They'll make godly choices, Father. Thank you that they'll choose right over wrong, godliness over evil, love over hate, and righteousness over sin. Thank you, Lord, that they have the mind of Christ, 1 Corinthians 2, 4, 16. Thank you that they are spiritually minded, not carnally minded. Because carnally minded is, is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. So thank you, Father, my kids are spiritually minded. Amen. Amen. So we can declare these things and see the good results. And uh, God delivered, oh, oh so in, in the case of Zona, and God delivered her, it was amazing transformation. And, uh, you know, the same thing happens very often whenever people pray for these Muslims. Maybe they were terrorists. I've heard many testimonies of terrorists who have had visitations of Jesus. And, wow, and he told them that I am the Messiah, not the Mahdi, the one that they're waiting for. Huh? No, he's the Messiah. And so they, they gave their hearts to Jesus, got totally delivered, and these terrorists are now preaching the gospel and evangelizing for Jesus. And so don't hesitate to pray that kind of a prayer. And the children will have a visitation of Jesus and have their own encounter. Amen. Another point is this. Christian moms have authority. Christian moms can pray. Christian moms can decree. And Christian moms have authority over all the power of the enemy. Luke 10, 19 says, Behold, I give unto you authority over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Amen. Nothing Amen. because of the authority that I've given you. Matthew 16, 19 says, Whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Do it in the name of Jesus and by the blood of the Lamb and watch the good results come. He's equipped you with authority. Amen. Command the enemy. Desist your maneuvers and your strategies against my family. I break your power. Take your hands off of my children. The blood of Jesus is against you. Put on the full armor of God in Ephesians chapter 6. The helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, the loin girts of truth, the foot of the, of the gospel of peace, the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, and the shield of faith that will quench every fiery dart in the enemy. Yeah. Glory to God. And so, he has delivered you out of the power of darkness and has translated you into the kingdom of his dear son. 
And say, Father, I thank you for that same thing happening to my children. I thank you that they're learning to walk by faith and not by sight. That when people and circumstances come against them, praise God, you're going to diffuse the enemy's tactics over their lives. And you can, for yourself, just simply say, Father, thank you that nothing moves me. I'm delivered from bother, and I have learned in whatsoever state I am therewith to be independent of circumstances. Amen. I refuse to let it get me down. Amen. Everybody say, I've been delivered, I've been from, delivered. Bother. from bother. So go about saying that. Because listen, the eyes of your understanding have been enlightened according to the Word of God. And you know the hope to which you're called. We just need to know and be aware of the power, the authority, the ability to decree that we have been given. He's qualified you with this. In, I mean, what's, that's what it says in Colossians 1.12, that he has made you meet or qualified to be a partaker of this inheritance. And all that I'm telling you about today is part of your inheritance. Everybody say, I have an inheritance. And so... You can break the power of the enemy over your children. You say, you foul, unclean spirits, take your hands off of my children. You'll not tempt them, attack them, or seduce them in any way. Go from them now in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Everybody say, for the Lord is good. And His mercy endures forever. Your child may be, get plagued with bad thoughts. You know, that, I think that's exactly what's happening with a lot of these kids that think they're homosexuals and they're not. Or these kids that uh, think that they're, uh, you know, a, 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 a guy trapped in a woman's body. Did you hear the guy said one time, he says, I'm a, I'm a guy trapped, I was a guy trapped in a woman's body. And then my mother delivered me. <laughs> Gave birth. All right, anyhow. But <laughs> there's a lot of people... A lot, of kids, a lot of these young kids are having thoughts like that, see? And you need to lay your hands on their head and say, I break the power of the devil over their lives. Satan, you take your fiery darts, your demonic thoughts, and get in Jesus' name. And thoughts of unworthiness and thoughts of inadequacy and thoughts of there's, I'm, I'm no good or I'll never amount to anything. No, those are from the devil. And you need to lay your hands on them and allow that anointing that's in you to come off on them. Come on, somebody. Declare, Lord, I ask you to place a heart hunger for, for a relationship with Jesus in my children, that they would serve you according to Matthew 5, 6, that they who hunger and thirst after righteousness shall be filled. This is one of the things that we prayed over our children all the time and in, 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 in our prayers for them. Lord, put this in their hearts. Lord, we don't want it to be mechanical. We don't want it to be legalistic. We don't want to, this to be just, you know, uh, being crowbarred into serving Jesus. We want it to be in their hearts so that when they leave home, it'll stick with them. It'll motivate them because they're in love with Jesus. They have this personal, up-close relationship with Jesus. And that was our prayer when we raised our kids. And you can pray that too, that it'll, it'll be heartfelt in their hearts and not just something outward and uh, performance uh, or showy. No, you want it in their hearts. And that's when it's lasting. When he's got your heart, he's got you, right? <laughs> Hallelujah. And so the, we, we, we pray that they would find this kind of a relationship, personal relationship with Jesus so that they can get continuous downloads from heaven. That they would develop this intimacy with Jesus. That they would fall in love with Him. I like that Psalm 104 says, I will sing unto the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praise to my God while I have my being. My meditation of Him shall be sweet. I will be glad in the Lord. Well, if your meditation of Him, and then it goes on to say, Bless thou the Lord, O my soul. Praise you, the Lord. But see, if your meditation of him is sweet, you've developed some kind of a close, intimate relationship with Jesus. And you know, that's what gets you to heaven. It's that up-close, personal, conversational relationship with Jesus that gets you to heaven. That's what he wants. He wants a relationship with you. And in establishing that, you've been rebirthed 
You were born once, but you can get born again, receive the life and the nature of God on the inside of you, and then develop this wonderful relationship where you're in constant communion with Him. Amen. I was this morning asking God, okay, God, what about this and this and this and this, you know, and just I want His direction for my life. I don't want to go off half cocked and, you know, looking, uh, just out operating out of the natural carnal mind. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And I don't think you want a pastor that does that either, right? <laughs> Thank God He's given us power to change and transform and become Christ's followers. To blaze a trail for our children to follow like Suzanne Wesley did. Remember with Charles and, and John Wesley? I. I checked on some famous people and their mothers, and I found out that, well, one of them was Suzanne Wesley, and she and her husband, Sam, had 19 children. Can you imagine that? 19. And she uh, was dedicated to prayer and spiritual discipline. In fact, the, uh, I guess with 19 kids, you couldn't go to your prayer, prayer closet too much. So she'd take her apron and throw it up over her head, and that was her prayer closet. <laughs> she just prayed in there. <laughs> but she was loving, dedicated mother, and she credits, and, and John Wesley credits his life and all that he did back to his mother shaping his future for him from a biblical standpoint. How about Mary Todd Lincoln? She lived in Springfield, Illinois. She was respect, well respected. She was kind. She was devoted to her children. And she nurtured and trained Abraham Lincoln to become one of their greatest presidents. Lady Randolph Churchill. She had two children, Winston and Diana. She was a warm hearted woman who would, could always put you at ease. And she nurtured a man who helped save England in World War II. Yes who made this famous statement, there is nothing to fear but fear itself. And he would not quit. Amen. How about Anna Roosevelt Halstead? She was a pretty lady, vivacious, humorous, and the mother of Franklin Delano Roosevelt. And he would even have her come to some of his parties, and, and he would honor his mother. And, and she had six children, and one passed away early. How about Evangeline Lodge, Lodge Lamb? That was Charles Lindbergh's mother. And uh, she was a kind, warm, caring person. How about uh, Nell Nilsson Reagan, Ronald Reagan's mom? She was outgoing, kind. She had two children, Patty and Ronald. And he became a great president of the United States. And the last one, Rose Kennedy. That was John F. Kennedy's mom. She had nine children, three of which were girls, and she was almost, the, this record that I, I, I heard was, said that she was almost as rough on the kids as her husband Joe was. Well, I suppose with nine kids, you got to be a little bit rough, right? <laughs> Get them in line and like an army, you know, regiment them and whatever. But all of these people helped to shape the lives of famous people, <clears throat> and I just want you to see this video clip, if we can show this, Daniel, back there, um, of uh, this, this young man who, you say, well, what if somebody doesn't have a mother? Well, this young man didn't have a normal father-mother situation, but I want you to see what God did in his life, and I think it's marked California shall be saved. Is there a video back there on that? This young man... But this, inter this is an interview, yeah. Can we turn the sound on there? He's now a leader in the explosive movement called California Will Be Saved. In a nation where trust has been placed in politics, social constructs, and economic remedies that have faltered, Ross Johnston's encounter with God birthed a belief for what he says is the answer for the nation. I had never been in church, never heard a sermon, never heard a worship song, yet in the midst of all of these circumstances, God not only pursued me, He not only chose me, but He saved me. Today, Ross stands as a torchbearer for revival, co-founding California Will Be Saved, a movement committed to igniting spiritual fervor across California's influential urban landscape. Through large-scale outdoor gatherings featuring live worship, gospel proclamation, and baptisms, 
This movement aims to kindle a revival that emanates from personal transformation to impacting the world at large. Please welcome to the 700 Club, Ross Johnson. It's wonderful to have you here. It's such an honor to be here. What a story you have. So you were conceived by artificial insemination, raised by two moms in a lesbian household. What was life like for you then, Ross? Were you confused by any of that? Yeah. or? Well, for me, keep in mind, I had never been to church, never heard a worship song, and never heard a sermon. So all I knew was all I knew, right. right? But then at 15 years old, when I met Jesus and I encountered the presence of God, now I started having these heart and soul questions that for the first time yeah. in my life, I actually had to engage in. So what did that do to your household? Because, I mean, you were having to confront God's word and God's yeah. way and that had to be very difficult. Well, everybody's story is so unique, but I remember for me, I was only 15 years old. I so know. guess who had to drive me to church? Oh. My mom, right? Wow. So from never going to church in my entire life to now I'm going to youth group, Sunday service every single week, and my mom was the one who had to drop me off. And so that's why I always say, though my mom has not encountered Jesus yet, she loved me so well, yeah. so much so that she would take me to church every single week. Wow, that's that's a wonderful, wonderful gift from your mom. Mm -hmm. That's quite quite interesting because I'm sure it was a hard time for her. Yeah. So you leave a six-figure income to become a missionary. What in the world led you? God doing in your heart? I still don't know. I'm just kidding. I'm just <laughs> kidding. Well, it was 2020 and I remember looking at the world and I'm seeing everything that's happening in that time. Yeah. And something rose up in me where the best language I have for it is I knew that I was born and created for this exact time on the earth. And so the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, Ross, if you don't stand now, you never will. Now, listen, I love the father heart of God, but this was not a daddy God type of moment. This was a stern father looking at his yeah. son saying, Ross, you have a decision to make right now that's not only going to impact you today, but for the rest of your life. Yeah. Something's happening amongst young people today. God is, is speaking some radical things. Do you see that outside of the specific work that you're doing? Absolutely. I mean, I like to say it like this. In my generation, we've tasted everything the world has to offer. Yeah. We've oh, tasted true. every pleasure, every comfort. We've heard all the voices. We've watched all the TV shows. We have all the social media. But for some reason, there's a longing in our hearts. And what that is, it's the God void. All of us were designed to know God as our Father, to be filled with the Spirit, to be saved through His Son. And so until we come into that reality, we're longing for intimacy. Yeah. We're longing for affection. We're longing for destiny and a hope, yeah. which obviously we know can only be found in coming into a relationship with the Father. That's so amazing. I came to Jesus during the Jesus movement and wow. same longing, you know, for relationship, mm -hmm. for intimacy, for meaning in life. Tell us about the work that you do. Uh, California will be saved. What What's happening there? Because we read in the news about things happening yeah. in California that aren't great, yeah. as beautiful as it is. Mm -hmm. uh, tell us about that. Well, people always look at California and they're like, can anything good come out of there? Yeah. Right? Can anything <laughs> good happen there? The politics are this. And everybody wanted to go there. Exactly, yeah. right? But here's what I like to say. In just the last 100 years alone, there's been four massive moves of God in California. Jesus People Movement, Amy Simple McPherson, Azusa Street, Billy Graham launches ministry. So I always say it like this, look at the ground underneath your feet. It's a land of revival. And wow. here's what we know about wow. God. If he did it once, if he did it twice, if he did it three times, if he did it four times, a he's rhythm. gonna do it again. No matter what your background, whether your mother or wasn't the, the, the Christian lady or whatever, as, in, as indicated with this young man, when he came to Jesus, everything changed. He was refathered. And so, uh, today, maybe you're sitting here and you wonder, well, I want, I want the same kind of transformation in my life. Well, it starts with a relationship with Jesus and then being filled with the Holy Spirit. So let's bow our heads for a moment and let's just pray this prayer together. Say it with me. Heavenly Father, I look to you right now as the source for my life. Jesus, come into my heart. Be the Lord of my life. Thank you for forgiving me of all my past sins. Thank you for loving me, for saving me, for filling me with the Holy Spirit and fulfilling a destiny and a purpose for my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, Ross also mentioned being filled with the Holy Spirit, and that's so important as, as well. 
You've been saved and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Do you know that if you look at Romans chapter 8, you find out that the word spirit is mentioned 21 times. That's a lot. 21 times, which indicates that the Holy Spirit is very, very important, isn't he? We know that, <clears throat> that the Holy Spirit is there as a comforter. But in, if you look also at uh, Romans 8, 26, the Bible says one of our weaknesses is we don't know what to pray for as we ought. And so what happens? The Spirit will pray through us and for us in any given situation. Because one of our infirmities, our weaknesses is we just don't know what to pray for as we ought. But the Holy Spirit will pray through us. We see in Romans 8, 13 that He will help you overcome the deeds of the flesh and mortify so that you can mortify or kill the deeds of the flesh. The Holy Spirit is very, very important. He's the one that raised Jesus from the dead. And He lives in you. And the Bible says in Romans 8, 11 that He will quicken or make alive your mortal body. So anything that needs quickening, all right? You have something inside you that's dead, and maybe your gallbladder is dead or something. Well, he can quicken that and make it alive. Your spleen, whatever it is, your heart. And so the Holy Spirit, you see, is, is very important. He's mentioned 21 times. And so we need to be aware of the need in this last day for the Holy Spirit so that you can know what power you have at your disposal. Amen? The Holy Spirit is the representative of the Godhead in the earth today. <clears throat> but getting back to you moms, that's available for you, and you need the Holy Spirit in these last days. Moms' influence for the kingdom of God is profound. It really is. Your position is irreplaceable. You're chosen by God for an awesome purpose, to fulfill a godly role for the kingdom of God, and for this great nation. Your nurturing and influence will shape the future generations through Jesus so that you can actually make a powerful, <coughs> pardon me, impact. <coughs> How many want to make a powerful impact? And so, The God who created the universe sees you. He loves you, and you are cherished by Him. He will equip you for the godly task and direct your path. Moms, in short, you can find your strength in Jesus. You are so valuable and significant. We want to honor you today. And if you've been disappointed or you're grieving for some reason, we pray the Lord will minister His comfort and His peace to you May you know the full extent of his love for you and that you are not alone. Hallelujah. So, you and I would not be here without mothers. <clears throat> they gave us the gift of life for which we are grateful. And by giving us the gift of life, if you read John chapter 10, verses 1 and 2, you find out that that's the entry into this earth, the door through which we come into this earth, now, it mentions Jesus as a door later, but that birth is the door that gives you entrance into this earth and gives, makes it possible for you to take that opportunity to get saved and then ultimately live for eternity in heaven. You got to be born first, right? Yeah. And so that's the door that gives you entry, gives you the possibility then of being born again and going to heaven someday. And so we commend you, moms, and we know the pain of childbirth is somewhat minuscule compared to the joy of bringing a new life into this world. And we know that you've made many sacrifices. And sometimes it even put your, has put your health in, in jeopardy a little bit and in some way in order to bring life into this world. And so we salute you because you are involved with putting good, godly data into our computers. <laughs> Thank God for that, endeavoring to instill a, instill a biblical worldview in the midst of a secular anti-God culture. So, but it's well worth it. All the challenge, all the time and effort is worth it, isn't it? Thank you, Lord. So you have a highly significant role in loving, shaping, nurturing the future Christian leaders of this great nation. I remember we used to go camping at Slippery Rock Campground, and that's where my parents would do their nurturing. And so we did the same thing. 
Whenever we had our children, take them to Slippery Rock Campground, and that's where we had some family education. We even talked about sex education there with the children. So uh, that was usually when we were laying in bed at night and it was dark and, you know, you couldn't, and no one could get embarrassed by it. We just shared right there. <laughs> but parents, you are the, the most important influence in, in your kids' lives. Sometimes we think that their associations with their friends and their peers are going to be more influential. No, I want to tell you that you are the most influential person in their lives, you parents. Don't forget that. And they really do, deep down, want to please you. So, young people, we say, once again, honor your father and mother, that your days may be long. Show them love and respect, and rise up and call them blessed. Let's stand this morning. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Teaching our children to be obedient, teaching them to how to have the favor of God in their lives. And that obedience, by the way, is a way to success, isn't it? Kids learn unselfish love from their mothers uh, because they are, I mean, all they do is it's unselfish love and it's expressed. And uh, so, once again, my wife did a great job with our kids and I'm so grateful for her because you taught, now we're working on the grandchildren, right? <laughs> and uh, she's doing a good job with them too. But we can teach our children to have a dependence on the Lord, right? As the comforter, not Southern Comfort or Seagram 7 or Bud Light or Old Granddad or Thunderbird Wine, uh -uh, no, but have dependence on the Lord, right? Hallelujah. Let's lift our hands to heaven and say, thank you, Jesus. Oh, then I'm saved. Going to heaven. Now, Lord, help my offspring, my grandchildren. Touch them, Lord. Put a hedge of protection around them, Lord, and cause them to be stalwart Christians in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Give Jesus a hand this morning. He's awesome. Glory. Hallelujah. Do you want to say anything? Anything you want to add to that? Just the comment. Here you go. Talking about Mark Hankins when he brought the hot girl home. <laughs> his wise mother said, what's his name? Mark, you might get what you want, but you won't want what you get. <laughs> <laughs> so speaking words of wisdom like that, yeah. not always quoting scriptures or... But just being there for them when they need to talk. Sometimes that's an opportune time. When they go through their teen years, they don't want to talk. <laughs> but I'd meet my boys in the in the kitchen and I'd say, You're not going to bed until you talk to me. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Thank you, Lord Jesus. We love you, Father. You're so good. Lord, we praise you. Thank you for your word of God, the word of God that is gives us guidance for our lives and helps us to steer our children in the right direction. We love you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's praise him as we go. <laughs> Lord, you are our living hope today.
Restore hope to each one of us today, Lord. Yes, Lord, put purpose back into our life, Lord. Give us a new one too, Lord. In Jesus' name, everybody said, amen. Have a great day, everybody. And I just wanted to add all the good stuff that Pastor said was awesome. Also, as a mother, teach your children to hear his voice because his voice is going to lead him, lead them throughout their lives.